Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We like to take sides. We like to divide. Uh, we like to make it us versus them. If you, if you don't believe me, um, you should go into uh, an elementary school classroom and ask them which school is better, Michigan or Michigan State. And then you hear it. Evidence doesn't matter either in those debates. We have our opinions. We like to take sides. That's why those jokes, those there are two kinds of people in the world jokes, uh, make sense to us because we enjoy them. We enjoy putting one thing uh, against another. Jesus even does this. Uh, while we, though, like to make us versus them about things that are not as important, Jesus, in our gospel lesson today, says there is going to come a time when it is a division, a separation. And that will happen on the last day. Jesus says this, and he says this is what it's going to be. He's very clear. This is what it's going to be on the last day. The Son of Man will come, and he will separate. He'll separate one from another. The sheep from the goats. And that can be very scary for us. Because that means that there is an end, there is a separation. Well, where do we stand? Do we stand with the sheep or do we stand with the goats? And this is one reason we should look at this text all the time. Because Jesus is, again, being very clear. And if there is a separation that matters, it's this one. It's not which team do you follow. Or even any of the other things that we do to separate ourselves. It's this one at the end. The sheep and the goats. So note how Jesus separates them. And let's look at this text. It says, first of all, that all nations are gathered to him, and then he separates. But he does not separate on basis of nation, or gender, or team. What he separates is sheep from goats. And then he gives the evidence of that. What does this look like? What do the sheep look like? What do the goats look like? And he gives one very clear thing. He puts the sheep on his right, and the goats on his left. And then he speaks. And as a judge who gives his verdict, he tells the evidence. You who are on my right, you righteous, come and inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And then he tells them the evidence. For when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. When I was sick, you came and you visited me. They're confused by it, though. Lord, when did we do this to you? He looks over at the, the goats on his left, though, and sorry that you're sitting on this side. Don't take it this way, but I've got a right hand and a left hand. He looks at those on his left, and he says, you go to the place. No, not prepared for them. It's prepared for the devil, for Satan and all of his angels. Why? And he says, because when I was thirsty, you didn't give me anything to drink. When I was hungry, you did not feed me. When I was sick, when I was in prison, you did not come and visit me. When I was naked, you did not clothe me. And they respond the same way. Lord Jesus, when did we do this? When did we see you and not feed you? That's how Jesus separates them. Those who fed him and those who didn't. At least that's the evidence. And that's a clear thing we need to remember. It's not necessarily the reason they're separated. But it's the evidence of why they are separated. Evidence is that those on his right fed him. And Jesus says that. Fed me. Gave me to drink. Clothed me. Those on his left, it's you didn't do this to me. And Jesus is speaking about himself. Of course, they're confused. Jesus, when did we see you and not do this? And the ones on his right are confused too. Jesus, when did we see you and not do this. Now, dear Christians, here's where we have to stop and think for a bit. Is Jesus separating based on works? And works against who or for who? Now, certainly, Jesus wants us to feed everybody, to take care of those in need. These are the greatest commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus even teaches, love not just those that you like, but love your enemies. Love those who persecute you. Love those who hate you. Love those who would like to tear you apart. 
Now, Jesus does command us to do that. But that's not the separation here, though. Jesus says, when you did this to me, and now for this we need to think for a minute, and we need to go back, and and this is why we need to study this text, because it is comforting, but there's a lot to it. A lot to unpack even more than we can do on a a Sunday morning. Uh, But we'll look at a little bit of this. Jesus says that when you did these things to the least of these, my brothers, you did this to me. Now, if we go back in Matthew and go back to chapter 10, very important chapter, this is where Jesus in the gospel of Matthew calls the 12 disciples and he gives them authority. Authority to go out and speak in his name. And you can go home and read through this chapter. Jesus gives them very clear instructions. When you go out, when you go to a city, if they receive you, stay there, dwell with them, teach them, bear my word, show them the forgiveness of sins. But if they do not receive you, leave that place and wipe the dirt off of your feet. He says, this will happen to you. You will be persecuted against. But then as he gets to the end of that chapter, note what he says here, talking to his disciples. Whoever receives you, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. The one who receives a righteous person Because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple. Truly I say to you he will by no means lose his reward. It's amazingly similar language. At the end Jesus does call and he separates the sheep from the goats. And it does point a little bit to works. But it's not the works that are really the main point. He's pointing to evidence. You who received me received those whom I sent. He who receives you, Jesus says to the twelve, receives me. And they received them even by giving them a cup of cold water. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked and in prison, you clothed me. Jesus, when did we do this? Well, when you did it to the least of these, my brethren, my brothers. Now, yes, Jesus wants us to take care of everybody. But the evidence here is not evidence that we did good things. It's evidence that those on his right, the righteous, the sheep, what they did is they received the word that Jesus sent. It might not have looked great. It was from the apostles, fishermen, tax collectors, from those sent in his name all the way down to clergy. But this isn't just about receiving clergy and pastors. It's about receiving and hearing those who tell you about Jesus. How you receive that word from your parents, from your teachers. How you receive that word of forgiveness and life And this is what Jesus is pointing to as this evidence. It's not the works they did. Because again, the people on the left are like, Jesus, when did we not do this? No, what Jesus is pointing to is evidence that they received his word of forgiveness. That's why they're on the right. That's why they are the righteous. Because in receiving that word, it's not about the taking care of those who spoke it. But it's about hearing the word that they spoke. It's about knowing that they are forgiven. Receiving those that Jesus sends in his name throughout the world, which is why we support our missionaries who go out, why we pray for our chaplains who are in the military. Because they go out not for themselves, but in the stead of Jesus. And we pray that people would hear their word. That they would receive it. Because in the end, that's the distinction that matters. Those who hear that word and receive it and know that they are forgiven, know that they are made righteous, as we talked about a few weeks ago on All Saints Day. What makes a saint? Somebody who hears God's word and is cleansed from their sin, who's baptized in the waters of holy baptism, who heard that word. And so, dear Christians, don't let this text alarm you in the sense of wondering if you have done enough good works. That's not the point of it. If it is, well then Jesus is completely changing the story here at the end. Because that's not what he preaches throughout his gospels. 
What it's about is knowing if you've heard that word. Have you heard the word that Jesus is your Savior? It might not look grand. It might not be accompanied by miracles. But as Jesus says, when you hear this from even the least of these, not from even the greatest pastors or people, but those who are sinners right along with you, what you hear is Jesus. You hear him tell you your sins are forgiven. Jesus takes your children up in his arms as he washes them in the waters of holy baptism. Jesus takes the least of these and he pours into your mouth his bread and his body and his blood for the forgiveness of your sins. And dear Christians, that's the promise that shows us we have eternal life. It's not works. If it is, well then, Jesus got everything else wrong for the rest of his ministry. Because it's about him. And when you receive the least of these, my brothers, Jesus says, you receive me. That's joy for us. Because that means you have heard Jesus speak. You have heard him through the mouths of your parents, your grandparents, your godparents, your teachers, your pastors throughout the years. You have heard Jesus. You have heard him tell you he loves you, and he forgives you, and he gives you life. Now may that peace of God that surpasses all of our understanding, may it guard, may it keep your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ, your Lord. Amen.